You know the express checkout lane, 10 items or less? That idea was invented in today's episode of Antique Bottle Stories. I found this the other day at the antique store. It says Zest Mentholated Brushless Shaving Cream. Honestly, the reason why I wanted to bring it home is it still has some contents in it, which can be opened up and smelled. It smells typical of something from the 50s, and for $5, it was coming home with me. So once I got it home, I was hoping there would be a story for it. Luckily, there was much more of a story than I was even hoping for. This says Webb City in St. Petersburg, Florida, and this is a fun one, so let's get started. Okay, so there's a guy named James Earl Webb, he went by Doc. He was born in 1896 in Nashville, Tennessee. The story goes that he dropped out of school at age nine, he said because he hated school. It sounds like he had serious ADD to me. He said he couldn't sit still and listen to the teacher and he was so restless, so he quit. So he started working setting pins in a bowling alley, along with mowing yards and delivering newspapers. He also peddled milk and veggies around town. He got pretty good hustling as a salesman. About age 20, he became a pharmacist. No, he didn't go to school for it, he just decided he was a pharmacist. And he decided that he would become a purveyor of patent medicines. He worked at Economy Drugs in Knoxville, and apparently he came up with a few concoctions that did pretty well. He had one for a venereal disease that actually sold pretty well. It was called Webb's 608. And happy customers started calling him Doc. He married Marie, and when he was 19, they had their first child. They ended up having two kids together, James Jr. and Eleanor. They've been married for 13 years here. Around age 29, which would be about 1925, he moved to St. Petersburg, Florida for his health. He worked at a small drugstore there, and at some point, I think that same year, he bought out the store and he renamed it Cut Rate Drug Company. So I went looking in the directories and I didn't find him listed in St. Petersburg in 1925, but in 1926 he's listed in there. There's also a guy named Loyal Webb working with him, and that's his brother, John Loyal. So Doc's mission was to undersell all of his competitors by at least 10%. Going into the 30s, he expanded the store to sell more than just drugs. He started selling food, clothes, home furnishings, very much like Walmart is to us today. In fact, this guy is supposedly the inspiration for a Walmart type setting. His store even had a cafeteria that served breakfast for three cents and dinner for 25 cents. He was crazy imaginative. He had all kinds of gimmicks and ideas that had never been thought of before. Nothing was too crazy to try. He didn't even mind being absolutely ridiculous. At one time, he sold $2,001 bills for 95 cents. The next day he sold another 2,000 for 89 cents. And then the third day he offered to buy them all back for $1.35. He was actually a little bit of a showman too. He started coming up with more and more interesting things to see at his store, like dancing chickens, kissing bunnies, tightrope walking roosters, mermaids. You might even see a circus act with Doc in the center or a beauty pageant in the parking lot. He would have topsy-turvy day where you could find something like women's underwear being sold in the produce department or bed sheets on sale at the soda fountain. Stack them high and sell them cheap became his motto. He took risks. He took IOUs from customers, extending credit to just about anybody. He said, I didn't care a damn about the money. I wanted customers. In the middle of the depression, he was thriving. In 1936, sales were over a million. In 1941, it was over four million. In 1948, he grossed 15 and a half million. Lots of stories were written about him. Someone said, to talk to Doc, he came off as kind of nervous, but he was sharp as a tack. He once self-proclaimed himself as the ugliest little fellow in St. Petersburg. He was 5'5", 130 pounds. The newspaper says he's not ugly, and he looks at least 10 years younger than he really is. He apparently was an avid tennis player, and he occasionally enjoyed singing. He also had over 150 tailor-made pastel suits made from imported fabrics from overseas. 
They say his silk tie collection is out of this world. Stories would say he would go to bed about four or five in the morning and wake up about eight or nine every day. They say he never was a drinker, occasionally, but he'd rather sell it than to drink it. He didn't drink coffee either, but he definitely liked his Sanka. He would spend almost all of his workday on the phone since he would never sit down to write a letter if he could help it. He only ate one full meal a day with a few snacks throughout the day. He was definitely a fly by the seat of your pants kind of guy. It says when he traveled, he never made an itinerary. He just goes where the wind blows. Let's look at 1935 directory. James is president, a Charles Moyer is vice president, and his brother John is treasurer. Now John ends up dying a few years later at the age of 44. In the 1940 census, Doc is 44 now and he's married to 24 year old Aretta. They've been married for about six years now, so she was 18 when they got married. Now I never found out when or why his first marriage broke up. Anyways, Aretta is just a few years older than his son, James Jr. The newspaper says Doc fell in love with her while she worked at his delicatessen. Just a quick look at James Jr. Apparently he went by Jimmy. He was a award-winning World War II pilot. 1946, Doc expanded, covering about 10 city blocks, four stories high, becoming the world's most unusual drugstore. It included a pharmacy, obviously, a flower shop, gas station, a beauty salon that his sister ran, dance lessons were offered on the roof, he even briefly sold liquors. He read a horrible story of a drunken man who raped and murdered a woman and threw her body in a lake nearby. He said it turned his stomach so much he decided right then and there to get liquor out of his store. Even though it was making two million a year, he didn't care. Now here's a few photos that I found. Here's the new cosmetic department. My jar of shaving cream could be sitting on one of those shelves. Here's a demonstration of a bubble bath. Who knows what he's promoting here? Soap, bathtubs, I don't know. But that's Doc there. And those girls look like this was a fun place to work. I bet there was never a dull moment. You never know what he's gonna ask you to do. Here's a piano playing duck. Here's some animatronic mermaids. Here's more girls promoting some floor wax. He had no office because he was worried that he would sit down in it. Instead, he runs around the place all day he says he loves being the boss and telling people what to do. He sometimes would think of a sudden bargain, grab the nearest microphone and announce this sudden deal. Like toasters are $25, but for the next 30 minutes, they're only $9.95. It says the mob would then go and buy all the toasters. Here's an ad in the newspaper that covers a full page. Now he got in trouble a few times with companies for selling their products too low. He had been sued and taken to court for it, but the courts sided with Webb. 1947, here's an article talking about a softball game between Webb City against the state champs. And here's the 1947 directory. Look how many listings. Webb's Delicatessen, Webb's City itself. Notice Booney Webb here. That's Doc's other brother. Then Webb's Inc., then Webb City Package Store, and Webb City Paint and Tackle. In 1947, his dad died in St. Petersburg. Nobody really mentions if his dad is involved in the business. They mention his mom, his siblings, his wife, but I don't really know the status of his dad. In 1948, here's another full page advertisement. It mentions that the parking lot can accommodate 1200 cars. This part mentions that there's a new large appliance department. The 1949 directory shows Webb City Trading Post a travel bureau, and a shoe store. In addition to newspapers, he had about 500 billboards out in strategic places to make sure that everybody would see one. In 1950, Aretta's parents are living with them now. Him and Aretta don't have any children. Here's a 1951 ad. It shows some photos. Here's some poster girls. And apparently their only job was to be eye candy. He would actually send them all around the country by bus or by plane to advertise for Webb City. Here's a rooftop garden. In 1952, look at all these listings now. I feel like this is a place like Ikea, like you can really get lost in there for hours. In 1960, there's another article on him. 
I like how they said this. Who is Doc Webb? Well, all kinds of writers have tried to define the world's smallest giant without much luck. <laughs> By this time, he's 64, and he's been at this location for 35 years now. Here's an aerial view of the property. They say it's constantly expanding. Now it includes 16 buildings, 63 stores, 10 parking lots, 1,500 employees, and an estimated 10,000 shoppers a day. Doc worked from 9 a.m. till about 10 p.m. with a break at about 6 o'clock to go home for dinner. The 1960s saw some interesting civil rights episodes. Doc's shop was located in a black neighborhood in St. Petersburg, so he had quite a lot of black shoppers. Well, they were allowed to shop there and work there, but they couldn't eat at the lunch counters. So silent protests were held at some of his lunch counters. In 1970, another article is written up. He's now 74, and he's been running this business for 45 years. He's still running full throttle. While the journalist follows him around for the day, he approves an order for $20,000 worth of Harriet Hubbard Ayer Cosmetics, he okayed the promotion of an assistant in the garden center, and he yelled at a guy for an ad listing an item for two cents higher than that of Eckerd's. He had been answering phone calls and trying to eat his breakfast all morning, but by noon, he still hadn't finished his breakfast yet. They say it's a $30 million empire. It says they average 60,000 customers a day now, Doc boasts that he sells more prescriptions, haircuts, gasoline, etc. than any other outlet in America. They asked, will he ever slow down? He said, why should I? When you like your work, you don't get tired of it, and you never want to stop. Only the Lord can retire me. They note that he is still going to bed about 1 or 2 in the morning and still getting up about 9. They also mention he has about 150 suits and 65 pairs of shoes. He still collects 75 to 100 ties a year. Here's a 1970 full page ad for Christmas Eve. It tells you what floor to find everything on. Shopping malls actually started popping up around town and Web City started to lose its appeal. Honestly, I'm surprised, but they say that the customer's shopping habits started to change. 1973 was the beginning of the decline. It was the first year that the store was not profitable. It also happened to be the year that Aretta died at the age of 56. They had been married for about 38 years. In 1974, the following year, Doc finally decided to sell the store. In 1977, Doc is 81 now. The board members have proposed closing three of the four floors. Also in 1977, he got married a third time to Dorothy. Dorothy was also a former employee. He's got Parkinson's disease and he has slowed down quite a bit. In 1979, there's comments stating that Doc is either in seclusion or maybe has died because people haven't seen him in a long time. In August 1979, Web City's doors closed forever. In 1980, there's talk of redeveloping the property. In 81, talk around town is that Web City is missed and nothing has taken its place. There's a photo of how full the parking lot was in its heyday compared to how empty the parking lot is now. In 1982, Doc died at 85 years old. By this time, the store had been abandoned for three years. The following year in 1983, Web City was demolished. A few relics were preserved, but that's it. I don't know about you, but even though I just learned about this guy, it makes me really sad that his life's work is just gone just like that. I mean, they couldn't repurpose any of those buildings, and they really were quick to rip that down, don't you think? Today, there's a Green Bench Brewery in St. Petersburg that has a tasting room called Web City Cellar. Its name pays homage to Web City. It managed to get a few relics from the store in there. So, my jar of brushless shaving cream is from probably the 50s or 60s. It does have a price of 50 cents on it, but something tells me this was purchased for much less than that. <laughs> I wish I could add smell o vision so that you guys could smell this. So I wanted to go see what Webb's property looks like right now, and this is where Google Maps sends me. So this must be his old parking lot. 
Well, this guy sure seemed like he just lived life to the fullest, and it looks like he worked hard and played harder. So I'm going to leave you with a little film that I found of Webb's City Dancing Chicken. <laughs> Have a great day, guys, and thank you for watching.